every time we watch this. 11 30 p.m. That would be nice. All right. So, yeah, yesterday we talked about the figures that I think these are out of your book. And I said, oh, yeah, it's great to know, but your pump doesn't look like that. Guess what your pump looks like? Looks just like that. So it looks just like that. And here's a cutaway I brought over. So there. That's not cutaway, and that's cutaway. So. I like him better. Okay. So let's start by looking at the pump right here. All right, I get the pump back. <laughs> the pump is by, it can rotate either direction. As long as you build it that way. Okay? So, right there, it says, this end of valve must be, what the hell, scratched off, be on discharge side of pump. So, when this part here is on, that side that makes that the discharge side of the pump, which dictates which way it's going to rotate. Mm -hmm. So here you have the pump body, and you have that little cap that says this side must be on the discharge discharge side. Well, if I put it on this way, then guess what? That's the discharge. That's the discharge, side. and it's got to run this way. And if I put it this way, this is the discharge. It's got to run the opposite way. So that only matters for depending on how all your plumbing is and stuff like that, but the e most ease of the direction? Which, uh, which way your engine is going to turn it more than anything? And the plumbing comes in? Yeah. I have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, change the way your engine Rotation of the pump. If I said it's a right-hand rotating pump, it's when viewed from? The drive-in. The drive-in. Oh, man. What, I got two people know this answer? The drive end of the pump. Maybe if you guys back there, you guys should like move forward or something and be more interactive with the class. Maybe. Seating chart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm seeing a pattern. So be interactive. So the direction of rotation is when viewed from the drive end of the pump. Okay. And the. This dictates which side is the discharge. discharge. All right, so look at everything we learned yesterday. Look, to, like, look at everything I talked about yesterday. I don't know if there was any learning happened. All right, so here's that little cap we, I just showed you that's printed right on there. Uh, direction is when viewed from the dry, or no. That, does that have a, a look on the front? Yeah. Uh, that says something too, what does that say? Oh. Anyway, it actually has a direction of rotation on it. It's it's uh, talks about it. I think. Yeah, this is there. All right, fuel's going to come in this way. Going to enter the pump, and it goes apparently down to the bottom of this one and out this way, not across the top. So through, and I mean apparently it does down through the bottom, out, right? But we got to have to have two things on top to make it useful for us, and that is the pressure relief. And a bypass. So if it's not running, does this show not running? Yeah, it does. So this one over here on, on the, my right, your right too. This is the not running version. Is it helpful when I do this? Let me see. What was that? Is that it? Yes, it is. It does have the rotation. You have the back end of the arrow point. All right, there we go. And I can use this. So, there we go. All right, not running. Fuel can't get through here, right? Blocked off. Going to come up into here, and it doesn't really push up on the diaphragm per se. It doesn't really help it much, but it's going to come in here and push on what? bypass valve which opens up a little passage right here and off out into the fuel control unit all right once when does this bypass close I didn't hear any reaction back there 
<laughs> when the output pressure of the main pump exceeds the pressure of the boost pump, then it will force this back closed. So the bypass will close when the output of this pump is more than the output of the boost pump. All right, so once it's, so that's what's gonna happen. Now, once it's running. So what would cause that to turn slower than the boost pump? Well, okay, it's not a speed thing. So, because the boost pump's electric and it's doing its own thing, this is attached to the engine. Yeah. So what would make the output pressure of the boost pump more than this? When the engine's off. So you turn your boost Definitely pump when on. it's off. Okay, yeah. so you turn your boost pump on and it can bypass that. It's going to bypass. As soon as the engine turns on, then it, 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 it overcomes it. It should, Sorry. provided the pressure of this is more than the boost pump. Yes. If for some reason, and I don't know, there's a lot I don't know in life, what if this pressure of this, what if the pump was so wore out and, and old and misadjusted that the pressure on this thing didn't come up until it was 1,000 RPM? It just run on the so it's going to bypass until this. So that's why I don't give a correlation. But I think in a perfect world, and the way it should work is once the engine starts, this should have more pressure than the boost pump. I just don't know if that's a fact. But I do know is when the pressure of this exceeds the boost pump, the bypass closes. But not until then. So that's the correct answer. So once the output here exceeds the boost pump, it will come up into here and close this and lock it off because this is going to be filled full of the pressure of this right here. So it's going to push that weak spring, going to push it out, lock it off. Okay, so now the pump is running and the pressure builds up more than we want. Well, that's okay because it comes up here and it presses on this plate right there and that plate right there. See that? That plate there, that plate there. It's going to push this uh, poppet valve up, which has a diaphragm and a spring and the line from the supercharger. And ignore, we'll ignore the line from the supercharger right now and just say it's open to atmosphere because that's what it would look like, open to atmosphere, just like that, just same thing. So this presses up against the diaphragm, against this right here, sorry, right here, not the diaphragm, right here. Fuel is allowed to bypass back to here. Fuel does press on the diaphragm once this thing opens up too, pressing on that and back around. All right, so if I want more pressure, I'm gonna take this screw right there and screw it in. down or in, the way increase would go, to the right. The funny part is this is left-hand thread. So when you take it apart, it's gonna look backwards. And I guarantee you, somebody from the last class, at least a third of the class, sat there at the oral and, and I said, so if I want more pressure, what do I do? And they said, turn it left. More pressure, they said, turn it left. Because it's left hand thread. This is the bad series. Who's got the little pliers on him? This guy, right? Come on. Nick's up and they really want to round him off. Fuck yeah. yeah. it, dude. This is the only chance you ever get to do something like this. Don't be surprised. Kevin, you didn't do that. Thank you. All right. So there's the screw right there that presses down on the spring. And I want to make it press down more. So if I turn it to the right, yeah, you're gonna lose it, huh? you said it's reverse thread. It's reverse thread. See how it's coming off now? Yeah. I'm turning it to the right, yeah. and this is coming off. But what did it do to this little piece right here? Moved it down. Oh, okay. It pressed down on the spring. Mm -hmm. So turning it to the right presses on the spring, oh. putting, oh, more, yeah, okay. putting so more pressure on this. <laughs> See, it moves this down. Putting more pressure on the spring, putting more pressure, it means the pump's going to have more pressure More pressure because it had, it had a harder time pressing up on this and bypassing, right? It's so that that, it's so that, that seat that's on top of the spring doesn't spin. It's got to stay still instead of otherwise it would be like grinding. Yeah, okay. And so if I turn it to the left, but it's closing back up because it's left, it's backwards thread. So what? 
If I turn it to the right, more spring pressure, more pressure. pressure. Turn it to the left. All right, so now we're going to see who actually comes up to me and says, Oh, it's backwards. It is backwards. Your turn, backwards Cooper. <laughs> okay, so don't do that, please. Don't do that thing. All right, so uh, if we want more pressure, we turn this one to the right is more pressure. Presses down on this, presses down on the spring, we get more pressure. Okay, up here is a diaphragm. That makes this a compensated fuel pump. So when we have pressure comes in here, it will assist the spring pressing down, creating more pressure. We talked about that yesterday. We good with that? Yes. All right. I just threw in a picture of a centrifugal pump. This is really an airframe item, not something we're going to talk about. All right, that's all there is to that. It's everything you need to know. I take it back. It's everything I know. So. So the good news is, I won't ask you any other questions but those, because I don't know the, I don't know the answers to any of the other ones. All right, so I had a lot that we wrote. Let me see. I wrote, I started yesterday with, I put two, rotary vape pump. I think it's going to be more fun if I just moved on from there and didn't have to write all this stuff, but do you want me to write all this stuff? All I need is one person going, please, and I will do it. All right, constant displacement pump. It is a constant displacement pump. You should know what that means. What does that mean? Same volume with every rotation. What if I speed it up? Okay, same volume but faster. Same volume per revolution, but we'll pump out more. Um, oh, I actually wrote all this. We'll uh, deliver a constant volume of fuel per revolution. All right, a pump does not pump pressure. It pumps what? Volume. Ooh, some of you guys are good. It pumps volume. It doesn't pump pressure. What do I need for pressure? Why do I hear the same three people? It's a good thing. <laughs> I want these people to speak up. <laughs> You keep going. Don't worry about it. I like it. I want other people to be like, hey, see, just say what Cooper says, okay? Just. <laughs> like a half second. Like a half second. I was like, it is. You say what I say, and you get the least bit of what I say. I know. <laughs> a restriction in the outlet causes pressure to build up. causes pressure to build up. If restriction is removed, what happens to the uh, pressure? pressure no pressure. Cooper? The pressure will go down. Okay. Everybody else? Pressure goes down. <laughs> I will warn you now, when you build your pump and you put it on that stand, there, are, there's going to be a pressure, uh, quiz, I will quiz you about pressure and flow. It even says right in the sheet that if you don't get those straight, you got to go like shoot some ladders. You got to, you're going all the way back. Yes. It's like, okay, you don't get this. So it's really simple, but this is really going to come up. So, all right. Uh, operation. Um, it utilizes an eccentric rotor. What does that mean? That's not centric. 
It's an old lift before. I was hoping for something. Like, where's a fur coat and high heel? I don't know. It's very rich. It's cinnamon with an S. Utilizes an eccentric, uh, not round. Uh, no, it's actually, it's rotor driven. It's actually an eccentric cylinder. Eccentric rotor. Changing the word. It utilizes a rotor driven inside an eccentric cylinder. It's the cylinder that's, there's the rotor, it's perfectly round. Well, there's, the, there's like a, a the ball is offset though, so it's... Yeah, ball is offset. The, the, nah. I guess you can say the, the, the veins are eccentric because they're constantly yeah. in and well, out of that inner piece. Well, eccentric can be circular because the center of rotation is offset. Okay. Two, two circles, two cylinders. It's all one thing. Like an eccentric on alignment for a car is a perfect circle, but it's off center of where it fits. So that works because the pin is offset to the cylinder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Damn. So you can write either way you want. <laughs> He's bringing it, man. Go back to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> slots in the rotor this is why everybody likes you Duke uh, sl <laughs> slots in the rotor allow uh, veins to slide in and out in and out um, as veins rotate Is that pump that's being passed around, does it rotate? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good, so check it out. As veins rotate, uh, the volume in the cylinder increases and decreases. Sometimes it's hard to put into words what is actually happening. So I guess that's why I like the videos. But I did do a video on this one. I just don't know if anybody's watched it. Because I haven't got that far yet. But I did do one. I'm just going to have it on repeat so you get like a thousand views on it. And YouTube will start paying you for ad revenue. God, that'd be nice. A whopping three cents of, of view. It's like, it's like two cents per thousand views. Yeah, something like that. Do, do, does the fuel, is, fuel, is the fuel good lubricant for those things? You know, like the oil pumps are like just mad. You know, okay, I don't know if it's a good lubricant, but it, it lubricates it. So I, I'm going to guess yes. Yeah, the larger this, I don't know, the largest. Uh, oh, sorry. That's not at all what I wanted to write. I'm going to pay attention now. It's time for you to, okay. So the large space is the outlet. The, the outlet and the smaller spaces inlet. I don't know if I like that at all. Let me see. Uh, you couldn't look it. Yeah, I think I'm going to just delete that <coughs> next time. I don't like the way that is. Because you can see that it, it's the inlet and outlet has nothing to do with the spacing because it's even all the way across. It just depends on which rotate. If I just change this arrow right here, I'd change that and that. So this could go either which way with this pump. Are they talking about on, in, the, in the vein? Yeah. Theoretically, they're, theoretically they're, they're equal the they are. entire time. That's what I said. Yeah. So I said I didn't like that statement. So. Sometimes when I write notes, it's like I'm reading a book. I'm like, oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. And I'll write that. And then sometimes I look at it and go, I don't like the that. The increasing size space is the inlet. The decreasing size space. But you can't. It's it, like you just said. It's it's well, even on both sides. Well, as it rotates, no, it would, it's it would be increasing while the other side is Oh, yeah, but I'll confuse people when we do that. Because, again, to look at this. and uh, So if somebody were to look at this with no arrows, then it, I would say, okay, which one's the inlet and which one's the outlet? Looking at this, you go, well, I don't know. But that's a cartoon. 
No, it actually looks like this. Well, I know that. But it's <laughs> yeah, I understand that Bugs Bunny also looks like a bunny. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you like when Bugs Bunny dresses like a like a girl with the big lips? <laughs> Where's the dress? I think the Lusco looks like a bunny. Have you noticed that? But likes the Lusco. All right. Uh, constant displacement. Constant displacement fuel pumps. Fuel pumps are designed to deliver more fuel than needed. Well, that's a good thing because it would be pretty stupid if it was designed to deliver less than what is needed. And if it was designed to deliver only exactly what is needed and it wore out a little bit, then it would be down to less, less than what it needed. So you can't do that. Um, all excess fuel goes where? Back to the It's pumped back to the inlet side of the pump. Now, sometimes that statement is used very literally, and sometimes it is used more figuratively. It's still literally, but so in this case, it's quite literal. Right around to the inlet side of the pump, uh, the rotating pump, uh, to be exact. Sometimes uh, certain components will say that. It's routed back to the inlet side. The inlet side can be the fuel tank. That's still on the inlet side, right? Yeah. So there are things that rotate, that send fuel all the way back to the fuel tank. And it will say back to the inlet side of the pump. And I go, well, wait a minute, it goes to the fuel tank. Well, that is on the inlet side. You're not wrong. So, oh, actually, that was my next note. Um, but I'm not going to write that because this pump doesn't apply to it. Um, That's what this one is, right? Just recirculates in the pump. It'll pull nothing else from the tank. Uh, okay, uh, pressure relief valve, pressure relief valve. Um, adjust the amount. Just the amount of fuel, of fuel. Being returned. Being returned, and thus the outlet pressure. And thus, let's say adjusts. All engine-driven fuel pumps must have a mechanism to allow boost pump fuel to flow through the pump bypass for what? For what? Two reasons. Uh, Starting and brakes. engine brakes. So all engine-driven pumps pumps must have a mechanism mechanism to allow boost pump uh, fuel fuel to flow through the pump and what is that called bypass, bypass. for two reasons Starting. Starting and um, in event of fuel pump failure. Some pumps are 
compensated. Um, or balanced. Balanced. So that is, means that atmospheric pressure or upper deck. What's upper deck pressure? I'm going to start using that term more and more. So upper deck pressure is turbo or supercharger outlet pressure. Um, is connected to a vent chamber. It is connected to a vent chamber on the pump. All right, let me get your opinion on something here because you guys are super smart. Okay. I can't find any, or maybe I can, I don't remember, but I can't find anything about this or have a look. Anyway, this has been bugging me. That's what I want to say. All right, so if I have a vent plug here, so it's just a plug screwed in here that's vented, all right? So, and there's this diaphragm right here. If I'm down at sea level, I'm going to have sea level pressure coming in here and applying pressure to this. But at the same time, I have sea level pressure all around here. I have it in the fuel tanks. Everything is at sea level pressure. Right. And so I have sea level pressure pushing on here. As I go up in altitude, there will be less pressure in this chamber, but also less pressure everywhere else. Does that less pressure mean that there would be less pressure on the diaphragm, causing the diaphragm to get pushed up easier? and allow the fuel pressure to go down or would the vent or is the vent just there to keep this from being airlocked because that would be a bad thing so if it if this didn't have a so it's either that right that the atmosphere going up would actually decrease the fuel pressure a little bit going down would increase the fuel pressure a little bit or the seal that would build pressure well okay is it is it for that reason or is it simply because, A, if you plug this off and sealed it, then this becomes trapped air, and as this tries to go up, it has to fight air pressure and spring. I'm for that. Yeah, I'm open for that one. Because in my mind, I'm having trouble seeing how atmospheric pressure would really have an effect. If it did, it would be negligible. Yeah. And it would be more important to protect the pump. Yeah, definitely uh, number two is an important thing. But I'm just, for years, uh, it's been said, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's, what that's there for it's you know as you go up in atmosphere it might also depend on the pressure of fuel that you're looking at um but you're talking about say 20 or 30 psi <laughs> so i don't think the atmosphere is going to have a lot of and the effect right. on if that. it had a huge change yeah it would probably be a bad thing but I mean, yeah I, I and make sure both you know I, I wouldn't see yeah. I, would, I think maybe both probably just depends on the size of the diaphragm in there but uh it's about an inch around it's right here What type of airplane would this typically go on? Is it like a turbo prop? Or, or, or no. uh, not turbo, a turbocharged something of a high altitude? Uh, for our purposes, yeah. Not, not like a. It would be on. Your airplane. Would it be on your airplane? No, because I have a high wing carbureted aircraft. Oh, okay. uh, potentially like the Bonanza with that pressure carb. What's the Bonanza seat? Same as mine. It's normally aspirated, any normally aspirated engine. So like 14? Yeah. So it's not that hot? No. But it could also be on a turbocharged engine. Well, no. If it's just got this vent plug, it's non-turbocharged. It's non-turbocharged. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. And then we could take this, this mental exercise one step further and say, okay, let's just say uh, we go way up in altitude. We're 16,000 feet. And then a little bug flies in here and plugs that up. So now I've got kind of a low atmospheric pressure. And as I go down in altitude, is that going to mean that I'm going to have a... I can build up pressure. <laughs> Many people blow it out. So I, I'm feeling like, I don't know, I'm just being honest here, that this vent plug really has more to do with, you just can't trap air in here. That's the problem. Because if you trap air, you have the more the diaphragm comes up, the more it has to compress the spring and the air. It's like, how do you calibrate that, right? So I feel like that's... It, it, it's, 
Uh, well, I'm going to get to that. All right, so that's a normally aspirated. Everybody knows what normally aspirated is, right? Because I want to start you. And if you don't, just go. And I won't call on you. you know? We need to have a signal where people can be like, and I'll be like, well, we you, don't have the like you could do that like that. And I'm like, somebody over here has a question. No, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> The buttons are at desk, so there's a light that goes off. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so that's right. Remember, there. What's the saying? There, there, are, there are there are no dumb questions. Just dumb people asking questions. No. <laughs> okay, but then there's the supercharger line. So that's different. This is the different. So they just chose to, you know, because that two drawings show one with the vent plug. So vent plug means no turbocharger, no supercharger, or at least they don't have it interconnected. So line from supercharger, also known as? A protect pressure. A protect pressure. So we talked about that, how um, a turbo would have some lag. Supercharger, we'll, we'll get into that. They think they're meaning an internally driven supercharger that's driven off the engine, so it won't have a lag. It's directly geared. But anyway, as this supercharger spools up and puts out more pressure, that pressure, air pressure, will come in here and assist the spring, which is another way of saying, yo, we're going to need more pressure because supercharger's working hard. All right? And then when the supercharger's not working hard, it's like, hey, we need to back off on some of this pressure that you're outputting here. So this will decrease, and then it's just spring and atmospheric pour on the power and it's like spring plus supercharger pressure is going to push down on this, which is going to cause the pressure, fuel pressure to go oh, up. Okay. What would be a ballpark for like the, the outlet pressure from like the upper deck pressure? What would be going into that? Like oh, it depends on the, the, we'll get into turbochargers, but it, it depends on the style of engine. So you have um, some that are called turbo normalized, which means it just tricks the engine into thinking yeah, it's yeah. at sea level all the time. So, you're at sea level, you go up at 1,000 feet. The engine's like, yo, we're at sea level. And you go 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. It's like, we're still at sea level. Then you get to like 11. It's like, oh, now we're at 1,000. Right? Because it hit critical altitude. That's what it's called. All right? Then there are some that are ground boosted. So you have to be careful. And it depends on the style of system. Um, they can go up to 35, 40 inches on the ground. So that's ground boosted. So it just depends. So in reality, then you probably wouldn't even get to those pressures with Fourteen, fifteen thousand feet, or whatever. You know, eighty, or you would be less pressure. Well, the, the be less pressure. Okay. Yeah. Um, what what do you see more common, turbo or supercharger? Like the engine driven or the exhaust driven style? Radials were all internally supercharged. Mm -hmm. So the older stuff is all supercharged. Modern stuff is all turbocharged. Because I remember turbos being really freaking big. Oh, radials. Uh, it was a P47, wasn't the most of the, it was fuselage had the turbocharger in it, I thought. I don't know. <laughs> they were both, they had a turbocharger. Ask me what I knew. Now you're going to tell me I don't know. All right. Well, I just wanted to see what you saw more of. I just told you. It's theoretically, if you could have one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have uh, You know, yeah. well, they actually make a bolt-on supercharger for my airplane. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is that cool? I don't, you can't hear it. You hear the freaking prop up front. Uh, okay, so where am I at? G, I said G, where was I at? A, B, C, D, F, G, sump pumps are balanced. Okay. Uh, okay, so the atmospheric pressure for upper deck is connected to a vent chamber. Uh, vent chamber on the pump. Um, I'm just going to say more pressure, more... Um, upper deck. Equals more pump outlet pressure. And less upper deck. Equals less pump. Pressure. I'm going to add down here because I don't like what I just wrote. Um, upper de uh, supercharger slash turbo pressure assists.
spring to increase pump outlet pressure. Good with that? Okay, so one of the, the projects, I know that I did a video of the, the fuel pump, but I can't find it anywhere. And I don't know what I did with that. So somewhere there's floating around a video of me kind of showing how the, the test fuel test stand works and talking about stuff. Like remember it because I'm doing orals, people are watching it. I'm like, I hear the pump running, but so anyway, you're gonna attach, you're gonna do an oral on the pump, put it back together and stuff, and you're going to huh? Put it back up. Well, I needed space to write. Go ahead. I'll talk slower to give you a chance to get caught up. Guys, okay, never mind. All right, so you're going to have, uh, you're going to put this, this on the machine. You're going to put your pump on the machine. And there's basically two things you're going to be looking at. One is flow. And one is pressure. And the pump, you're going to attach it. There's your pump. Pump. I'll label it pump. So, I don't know, there's a tank down below and it's going to come up and go into the pump. And then the pump comes out and there's some sort of valve right there and then it comes up got to get on the right side I think I just screwed it up oh, I did there it's gonna go through here and then that comes back and goes into the tank follow okay so this right here is a valve that you get to control and the pressure is just taken off right there or maybe it's here. Yeah, it's right there. So yeah, pump outlet pressure and pump flow. Oops, I know it. For sure I made a mistake. That is not there. We'll put that valve right here. Oh, I hope that's right. I hope that's right. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. We can talk about it either way we want. So we have the pump and we have this open. That is open. It's an orifice, right? Um, and so the pump is going to be pumping fluid out. And we're going to get some sort of pressure. And we're going to be getting some sort of flow. And the way this flow thing works, it, it has a little thing that looks a lot like this. little thing that looks like that and you read it right there there's a float in there and you read it right there at that corner and the more flow you get the higher it's going to go and the less flow you get the more it's going to sink so what's happening is the fuel is coming through here and it's kind of forcing it up all right so we got the flow over here we got the pressure over here so what you have to understand and get wrap your head around is that if I set the pump up for, let's say, um, ours out there is pounds per hour. I think it's like, I forget what the, I think it's in point something. We'll just, I don't know. We'll just make up numbers. We'll say gallons per hour. So if I had it for five gallons per hour, which is not very much, and I had 20 PSI, and don't use these numbers because they're just whacked out numbers I'm using. And so here we go. We've got the PSI over here at 20. And I've got this at five gallons per hour, okay? And we've got the valve is open. So, so I've set it for that. And now I close the valve a little bit. So full open and we'll do half open. Or for some of you, it's half closed. I don't know, it depends on who you are. <laughs> what is gonna happen when I close the valve halfway? Flow rate goes down. Flow rate goes down. Flow rate goes down. Flow rate is going to go down, and the pressure is going to? Stay the same. Oh, my gosh. I got a bunch of geniuses in here. I don't know about that. Why did the pressure stay the same? 
Wrap your head around this right now. What's on top of it? A freaking pressure relief valve. Yes. What is it designed to do? Release the pressure. Keep the pressure the same. Yes. So I close it. Now what happens? Zero. Pressure is? The pressure stayed the same. same. Oh, no, it didn't. It went up. If you tell me that went up, you fail. <laughs> I cranked it up to 5,000 RPM, and the pressure went up at full close, and I don't know why. All right. Now that you said that, I'm right here. Okay, this is all at 1,000 RPM right here. All right. Uh, now I'm running it right here at uh, 20 PSI, zero. I increase it to 2,000 RPM. Follow so far? Yes. Okay. What is my gallons per hour? Zero. What's my pressure? 20. We'll just call it 20. Why is it at 20? The damn pressure relief valve. What if I rotated it at 100,000 RPM? So you're not going to have 20 PSI. You're going to have a zero. broke pump. It's going to have zero. <laughs> There's going to become a point where the bypass can't handle what the pump's putting out and the pressure's going to climb exponentially. That's just a mechanical thing. Okay. What happens if um, we were right here and I rotated at uh, 10 RPM? It won't make that. Well, still we're going to have how much flow? Yeah, zero. zero. What's my pressure going to be? It'll be 20 psi. 10 revolutions every minute? It'll be nothing. It's so slow it can't. It'd be very, very low, probably zero. The, 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 the pump is limited. It can only, the pressure relief valve can't get more. So the pressure relief valve is going to come down. It's going to set saying, oh, your pressure's too low. But the pump is like, yeah, but I'm tired. All right, so at a point, you have to realize this, at a point, you can increase RPM, all bets are off. You can lower RPM, all bets are off, okay? So I'm back to 2,000 RPM, and I open it halfway again, halfway up. What am I going to have? There we go. So pressure flow is going to go up, and what's my pressure? The same. 20. I open it up all the way. Last time we had five gallons per hour with 20. What do we got now? Uh, maybe maybe 10. And pressure is 20. Do you follow? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm back here. I'm running it right here. We'll call this. Uh, will that have to be 2.5? 2.5. Somewhere in the middle. 2.5. We'll say 2.5 gallons per hour. And we're running it right here. Got it? Right here. We're running it right there. And we have uh, the vent on top right here. And I take a straw and I put it in there and I blow real hard. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to flow? It's going to stay the same. Okay, let's do this somewhere we can see it. We'll bring this right back down over here. And we have half open um, with pressure on chamber. All right, what's the flow going to do? Was it two and a half? What's it going to do? Stay two and a half. What's my pressure going to do? It's going to go up. Okay, is going to go up. Let's say it goes up to 30 because I could blow real hard. What's my flow going to be? It should stay at two and a half. Uh-uh. It's a die. It's an orifice. And when the pressure increases going to that orifice, what's going to happen? It has to go up. It's a magic orifice. It's not a magic orifice. So more pressure means you're going to get more flow so maybe it's going to go to 3.5 gallons per hour i don't know yeah bypass the relief a little bit i'm assuming all that the bypass is up it's working and so when i i use a syringe and i press on that hard that air goes in assists the spring pushes down what happens to the pressure if pressure goes up then flow has to go up well, what if I'm just sitting there running it? It's just running along at five gallons per hour at 20 PSI. And I go, huh, wonder what this will do. And I screw it like that. What happens? 
I increase the pressure. What happened to the flow? It goes up. What if I go, oh, that was the wrong way. I better go this way. Pressure goes down and the flow goes. Okay, if you, and if you don't understand that, that, that needs to be like a siren going off in your head going, uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. I did not get that. Because if you did not get that or understand that, you're doomed. Yes? You just said every time uh, pressure goes up, the flow must go up, right? Across a fixed orifice, yep. Okay. That has to. Let me just, you know, think about something at home. Your sink at home is a faucet with the restriction in it, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And if you open the faucet up, um, maybe it's a bad because you're pressure gauge, you get some flow. And you open it up, it goes more flow, right? What made it go more flow out the faucet? More water pressure. The pressure went up. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I'm running it back there at my half open, two and a half gallons per hour, 20 PSI, and I put my syringe on here, and I suck back on it real hard. What happens to? Pressure goes down. Half open, the pressure on the chamber, so same thing. Um, I'll put a vacuum, or negative pressure. Negative pressure. All right, so it was running 2.5 at 20. What's it going to do now? 1.5 GPH at, he said 10. Okay, I'll go with it. 10 PSI. Because now it's not fuel pushing the bypass open. You're sucking it open. Yep. And fuel takes the path. No, I can't think of a situation other than me putting a syringe on there and sucking it where a vacuum would happen on that, but Something it illustrates my point. Bad Something bad. You went to outer space accidentally. Oh, it's a beautiful point. If I had no orifice right there, no restrictions anywhere in this line, then I probably wouldn't. The line itself can be a restriction, okay. which could eventually build up pressure. But if everything in this whole system I just drew is that big around, uh, you're not going to get any pressure. Yeah, It'd be all flow. Phil was confusing me a little bit because we're talking about like how the pump, the pump is creating the pressure. It's the, but it's it's not really it's. it's the orifice, like the restricting creating pressure, but the pump does. Without the pump, you won't have pressure. Yeah, that's it. The pump does technically a little bit, right? Yes, yeah. you're, you're, I see where you're, you're going, yes. He said no. But he's also very right about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's, I even wrote that. The pump does not pump pressure. 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 It pumps oh. volume. You must have a restriction, restriction to get pressure. But without the pump, so if, you're, if you look over at your fuel gauge, your fuel pressure gauge, and it's zero, okay, it's not the restriction that went bad. <laughs> Under most cases, it's the pump went bad. So, yes, you're correct. You, you got to have a restriction, but you understand what we're saying, hopefully. I don't know, maybe not. Okay. Uh, again, if this is something you don't understand, you're going to end up standing there at that fuel pump thing, which makes a fair amount of racket, not very far from where I'm giving orals, so you'll have my attention the whole time. <laughs> Noting that you've just spent an hour and a half twisting buttons and turning knobs, hoping to get the blind squirrel finding its nut. And so don't do that thing. <laughs> Ask, learn, get it in your head first, or you'll be frustrated. Okay. Test tomorrow. Oh shoot! We didn't go. We didn't like review. Oh, well, you guys gotta go. So. <laughs> what? It's a pretty good review on the car breaker.